Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and I am so excited to have you here today. It's been a couple of months since I have taken you down to the garden, so I thought it would be super fun to give you a quick update, show you how things are looking, and also talk with you through some of the game changers that I've implemented in my garden this year so that maybe you can do the same and save yourself a ton of time in the next years to come. So without further ado, let's jump down to the garden. We can't go anywhere without our best friend following us, so she's going to come to the garden too. All right, so we are in the first area of the garden that I wanted to take you to, and these are butternut squash plants. I only planted four of them, so as you can tell, they are absolutely thriving, and this is actually my first year ever growing butternut squash. I have found that they love a lot of water, and they love fertilizer. Um, I'll show you the fertilizer that I use after this, or I'll link it down below, but I just use a all-purpose fertilizer that's completely organic and natural. I think it's from Organic Earth, but I'll link it down below. And they are totally thriving just off of those two things. So it's funny story. I actually had butternut squash for the first time, well, that I can remember. Back this March, we went to Idaho to pick up two of the goats and we stopped in Twin Falls and went to this super cute little restaurant downtown. And I had the world's best butternut squash ravioli. And after that meal, I told Sam that I was going to figure out how to make that ravioli. So here we are. I better figure it out because I think we're going to have far too many butternut squash on our hands, but I think that's a beautiful problem to have. Next, let's jump to the onions. And that is where the first tip I have is to make a super successful garden and to transform your garden. So let's jump over there and go look at them and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so these are our onions. And as you can tell, they are doing absolutely wonderful. You can probably see on the top that there is this brown, so it looks like they all broke kind of. But what that is, is I actually trim the tops of my onions a couple times a season. And what that does is that actually ensures that they are putting a lot of their energy down into the bulb rather than focusing on the green. So all I do is I go through with a pair of gardening scissors and I just cut the top off and leave about three or four inches of green at the top of the onion plant. Then I take the onion tops inside and I actually dry them out and I make onion powder. Just in my dehydrator, you just dehydrate them, put them in the blender so they become a powder and you've got onion powder. So that is definitely a tip of mine to make sure that your onions are growing really big and really nice. You can see, and I need to pull some of these weeds, but you can see down in the root system, these are creating really big and nice, beautiful onions. And that's what we want. Obviously we don't have a ton of onions planted, so it's super important that we are completely maximizing the onions that we do have. And another thing that I thought was interesting is each of these green like layers that are coming off the onion that is equivalent to one layer of the onion so the more leaves and the more greenery you have the more onion tops you have next let's jump over and i will show you how some of the tomatoes and peppers and beans are looking so just right next to the butternut squash and the onions we do have i believe a little watermelon plant and then this is just a zucchini plant um, these are both really small. They actually got super stunted, so they are just now making their way into the growing world, but they've been making a ton of progress and I am super excited about those. And along this entire back fence, we do have a ton of weeds because this is backs up to the chicken run. So we like to make sure there's enough weeds for them to have some cover. See the little goats over there. But down here we have all of our tomato plants. I did stick with, I think, uh, 25 tomato plants in total. You can see some are definitely bigger than others, and that's completely fine with me. I think they'll make that up here soon. But the exciting thing is, you can see down there, we do have some tomatoes coming on the bigger plants. So super, super exciting, and I'm really looking forward to having some tomatoes. And then over here are just a couple of plants, two tomatoes and a bell pepper that I just planted a little bit later. So here is a look at the full tomatoes along that back fence. Next over here, we have bush beans. So I'm actually growing, I believe it's purple royal that we have over here. And then right here is cannellini beans. Um, and you can see that they are actually starting to flower a little bit. So I'm super excited for these. I did grow the purple royal beans about 
three years ago and I actually had really good success with them, but that was before I knew that there are different types of beans and peas and that not all beans or peas actually require a trellis and that there is something called a bush bean, which looks like this and it is a completely freestanding bean. It doesn't require any trellises or anything like that. And I was so confused a few years back because I couldn't figure out why my beans weren't growing up the trellis. And it turns out they were bush beans. I've now come to learn and they literally just grow little bushes and then they will make pods with the beans that come off like you would expect. And then you just go ahead and harvest those beans and they're all super good. So this is my first year ever growing cannellini beans and I'm super, super happy with them. These are the uh, seeds that I got from Territorial and they've been doing wonderful. And along this back row, I have four okra plants and I definitely need to get out here and spray them. Looks like they're being attacked and I'll take you out along with that so I can show you what I use to keep bugs off of them. But as you can see here, this plant's doing awesome and we have two little tiny okras. What I did with these last year is I would just take the okras off as they would come, slice them up and put them in a freezer bag, and then I would use them in soups and stews throughout the winter. Then as we keep moving down this way, I do have a few weeds that took over some of the holes that I need to get out, but we just have a ton of pepper plants. So most of these are um, jalapenos or jalapeno type plants. Oh my gosh, look at how many flowers are on this. So exciting. We also have some cayenne peppers, some bell peppers, and I think maybe a Tabasco pepper if I remember correctly. This is the plant. Yeah, there's so many jalapenos on that. And then one of these has a big, oh my gosh. I need to get out here and harvest some of these because there are so many peppers on this plant. So exciting. This is like my favorite time of year when we can start making um, salsa and everything out of them. Look at that. It's a beautiful, beautiful pepper. A really nice pepper. We can just cut that bad spot off, make some fajitas. So I am so excited for all of these. So because weed cloth is new to me this year, I did want to leave a section of the garden without any weed cloth. That way I could kind of tell if it was making a difference and if it was worth the extra effort. And wow, <laughs> it has definitely spoken for itself. So if I turn around here, I can show you this is the section that we just left dirt. I planted corn and carrots in here and then my life just got crazy and I didn't have any time to do any weeding. So these definitely got taken over. We do have some corn down there, which I'll show you, but this is the difference from weed cloth and these plants are all potatoes. That is not weeds, that is 100% potatoes growing down there. So that's the difference between weed cloth versus no weed cloth. So that's my second tip of things that have completely transformed my garden and something that I will continue to do year after year, even if it's such a challenge with the Wyoming wind, is weed cloth. The one thing that I love about it is I no longer have to come out to my garden to weed. I used to have to come out every single day and spend about an hour or two every single day pulling weeds, making sure that they weren't taking over my plants. And now I literally come out to my garden to enjoy it. I can pull a few weeds here or there. And obviously you can see going down, down there, there's some weeds and that's totally manageable. When I get a chance, I can go through all of those, no problem. But I used to have to deal with weeds like this, where if I didn't get out here and pull them every single day, I wouldn't have any plants. And the challenge with that is by the time I would finish pulling weeds in this section, then maybe the section over here would be already taken back over. So when you're doing a big garden, if you have the resources and you have the time, I'm just please look into weed cloth. It was such a pain to get rolled out and to get to stay, but oh my gosh, it's completely transformed our garden. I feel like I'm rambling and I could talk hours about it, but I am really passionate about trying to make the weed cloth work.
Then over here is just a section of cucumbers. I did have a little bit of a problem getting the seeds to germinate, but I think that's because as soon as I put them in the ground, I just got really busy and didn't give them the adequate amount of water. And so now that we have our watering system all hooked up, everything is really taking off. So you can see I still have a couple of weeds poking through the cracks over there, but nothing that I can't handle. And our cucumbers, I think, are going to make it in time. Then just scooting over here right next to the chicken run, we have three cantaloupe plants. So there, here, and there. We've got one giant weed. And then I need your guys' help. I planted something. I have no idea what this is though. It got eaten by some bugs. So I kind of think it looks like a cabbage, but I didn't plant any cabbage this year, so. I have no idea. If you could let me know down in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. And then this is why people always tell you to plant your mint in a planter. My first year gardening here, I just put it in the ground thinking, no way will it come back. It's way too cold in the winter. And there it is. I never water it and it is thriving. So <laughs> there's our little mint. Okay, so first of all, can we appreciate that beautiful sunset? Wyoming always has the best sunsets. But this is a section that I'm super excited about and that's because it's primarily fruit and I, oh, I love fruit. So this is our grape. We have another grape just right over there. Um, and he, I'm trying to get it to trellis over this fence. Um, this is just like a metal fence. For some reason, it will not grab on. It just keeps wanting to grow that way where I don't have anything for it. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I'm so excited that we actually have grapes that are, I wouldn't say they're thriving, but there's a chance that they will make it. So I'm super excited for that. It's just a seedless purple grape called Reliance. And it's supposed to be hardy up to negative 20 Fahrenheit, which is right on the edge for us. But I think there's a chance that it will make it. So fingers crossed for that little guy. And then sprinkled all over behind me, we actually have a ton of raspberry plants. So you can see here, this is one of our smaller raspberry plants and there's a ton more over there. But I think from the time I was probably seven years old, I have begged my mother to let me have raspberry plants. And she always said no, because she told me they were gonna take over the yard and ruin her landscaping. And so now that I have my own garden, she can't tell me no. And so now I have raspberries taking over and ruining my landscaping and I absolutely love it. So we do have a few raspberries on some of these. These are only about two years old. Um, they just started really going last year. So let's go try to find a raspberry and I will show you how they're looking. Okay, here you can see some of our raspberries that are scattered all over in this plant. And oh, I'm so excited for them. We have gotten to snack on a few of them and they are so, so delicious. And then just on the other side of the fence from the raspberries, again, please don't judge all of the weeds in here. We have our orchard trees and these have absolutely taken off again as well. So this one over here, this is a cherry tree. It's a dwarf cherry, so I should be able to get a net on it as once it starts producing. Then we have a Fiji apple, I believe it is, and a Honeycrisp apple. The thing that has completely changed the game for my orchard trees is these, I know they're hard to see right now, but these wooden boxes. So they're kind of like moats and we just fill them with a lot of water. And that way the roots of the tree system are getting a ton of water. You do want to make sure that the moat is about the same size is about the same size as the leaves go out on the tree. That way um, the roots under the ground as they branch out, they continue to get adequate amounts of water. But putting these moats in and making sure they always have a lot of water have completely changed the game and have made these trees grow so, so much over this summer. Then like I mentioned, these are all potatoes. So these six on the end, those are sweet potatoes. I don't know if they'll make it. They're really small still, but I'm hopeful. And then all the way down this entire row is all of those potatoes that we planted together. If you missed that video, definitely go check it out because these varieties and these types are doing absolutely amazing. 
And right behind that, like I mentioned, I have had no time to weed, so please don't judge all of these weeds. I know I need to get them out, but these are all corn. I have a few popcorn. Majority are sweet corn in here. And finally, just hiding in here, we have our rhubarb. He has definitely gotten taken over by some of the bugs, so I will take you along when we try to fix that, but that's really a look at the entire garden. The last thing that I want to touch on that has completely changed our water game and I will never go back to the original way I was doing it is our watering system. So I'm sure you saw a lot of the hoses as I was showing you through. You can see one right there. And I have this garden on a fully automated watering system. I don't have to come here out here and water every day. It turns on by itself. It turns off. It waters individual plants and it has completely changed change the game. I am so thankful for it. And so I'm going to make another video showing you how we installed this watering system and how we've laid it out and also show you how we're using the same technique to automatically water our chickens and our goats. So don't forget to subscribe so you can see that upcoming video. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this garden tour. I would love to see what you guys have been doing. So definitely let me know down in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.